Thanks, Hamish. Um, my name's Patrick. I'm young, male, childless, and studying at university. That makes me one of the seemingly few people who won't directly benefit from this year's big spending budget. But I'll be one of the people who'll be paying off the giant debt for decades to come. Does the panel consider the budget to be fiscally responsible? And is it fair to future generations to accrue such a huge, but a huge debt with no real plan of paying it down? Larissa Waters, there isn't a plan to pay it down. Yeah. Well, thanks, Patrick and Sophie, for your questions, um, and the first gentleman too. Um, it's a good time to borrow, but we should be investing in services that improve people's lives and that help us address the climate challenge. This budget gives $51 billion, that's a B, in fossil fuel subsidies to big oil, big coal and big gas over four years. So much of that debt is created because there's massive handouts to big corporations and they're keeping those stage three tax cuts which go to the very wealthy, another huge proportion of the budget. So we think that investment in services is a good thing and we think now is a good time for government um, to take on debt to invest in those services that improve all of our lives and could help tackle the climate crisis. Um, but these handouts to big polluters to make the climate crisis worse, I'm worried that that's going to be the real threat um, to young people's lives going forward. Helen Hanks. Patrick, Patrick, Sophie and Olaf, uh, I too am concerned about a trillion dollar debt uh, for young people and I am concerned about what that trillion dollar debt is actually buying us. And, and I agree that this trillion dollar debt is not buying us solutions to climate change. Uh, there's opportunities in this budget, there were opportunities in this budget to make a game changing choice about how we lower emissions in this country. I'm also concerned that while billions of dollars was going out the door and is going out the door, there was zero dollars, zero, for the Integrity Commission that mm. was promised to us by this government at the last election. Mm. So, <laughs> with zero dollars for an Integrity Commission and nine billion dollars in a fund, essentially a fund that can be used for the next election, for projects that have been approved by Cabinet but not yet announced. That's $9 billion that we don't know what that will be spent on, but we can be sure as heck uh, there'll be a fair bit of pork barrelling uh, mm. that can be purchased for $9 billion. And if I was a young person, uh, I'd be pretty concerned about that. So Jane I hear Hume, you. Jane Hume, why wasn't there money for an integrity commission? In well, in fact, there was money in for an integrity commission in the 1919, 2019, 2020 budget. Where there was is money the integrity set aside. commission then? Well, it's being consulted on right now. The Commonwealth the Integrity third Commission, time. which you have rejected numerous the times. No, you the reason why the Parliament, the reason why the Labor Party and, up, and the Greens don't the want the Commonwealth Integrity Commission that's been proposed by the government is because <laughs> what they would really like is to have show trials, which we've seen in the ICAC in New South Wales, which have damaged people's reputations irrevocably. We're well, not going to have that in a Commonwealth Parliament. Well, we it's can't vote on a bill that's All not there, All it is is a we? media fodder. So we've set aside money for that Commonwealth Integrity Commission and we wait to bring it before well, the Parliament. Was any OB going, going to jail? I've, was seen, that? I've seen the budget papers. I looked for it carefully. Zero dollars for salaries, zero dollars for an Integrity the Commission. The bill's in it's consultation right now, the Helen. consultation has completed and it was roundly trashed by every expert in the nation. We're wondering when will a bill actually come to the parliament that listens to the consultation and that acts on the promise of the government. Come September 19, it will be 1,000 days since the Prime Minister promised us an integrity commission. We have a trillion dollars of debt. We have no watchdog, no policeman on the beat to monitor this, to actually refer any problems to. <laughs> Jane Hume, would you agree, given the amount of money that is going to be spent, which many ministers have oversight of, they have the ability to choose how that money is spent and where it's spent in some cases, that actually there should be some form of integrity commission in place uh, to monitor that? Well, I saw Absolutely. a list of these so-called slush funds that uh, Labor put out today, or I think or maybe it was yesterday, and one of them fell under my portfolio, which is the digital economy strategy. Now, that's 
a $1.2 billion strategy to take the economy to the next level and make that great productivity leap. That's not a slush fund. That's an opportunity for businesses to grow and invest and employ and, 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 and bring digitisation and, and productivity into their businesses. It's an opportunity to upscale and upskill existing industries like mining and construction and, uh, and agriculture and to bring in new uh, industries like fintech and regtech and the gaming industry and giving them a 30% refundable tax offset. You know, this What's is not a slash fund. This is an opportunity watchdog? for businesses to apply for grants so that they can, they can take their businesses to the next level, and that's how we get out of debt. We grow our way out of debt, we don't tax our way out of debt. Jim, to Jane Hume's point, are you just trashing good government programs? No, of course not. I mean, one of the reasons why I think Australians are sceptical about these 21 slush funds is because they've seen what happened with sports rorts and dodgy land deals and safer communities rorts. Mm -hmm. They know that this government has spent as much money on advertising themselves as they have preventing uh, domestic and family violence. They know that routinely for... That's not true. They know that routinely for the last eight long years, this government creates these buckets of money. They accumulate them to use to get through an election. And this uh, budget that was handed out on Tuesday night, the 21 slush funds, the $9 billion in secret election cash. I, I'm just going to call you up on this, because are you really saying that this program Jane's talking about is, a, is an actual slush fund, or are you just being a bit hyperbolic? No, there are 21 funds that ministers get to determine how they dole out the money. And what we've seen... Well, that's not true either, because they're not all ministers determining it. They can be departments, they're competitive <laughs> grant processes. I'm very pleased you said that, Jane, because that's what you said about sports rorts too, with the audit, which the Auditor General found to be a disgraceful rort. And we're talking, about, we're talking about borrowing money that some of these young people have to pay back. And some of these people have to pay back, unfortunately, money that you have borrowed to spray around to get you through elections. And that's not good enough.